Hi, welcome. Today we're going to start talking about constructivism. And really, constructivism is going to represent a major departure from behaviorism and social cognitive theory because we're really going to be thinking about learning from a completely new point of view, a really new perspective. So we're going to start off with cognitive constructivism and really look at the work of um, Piaget. So we'll start with Piaget. And constructivism. Our guiding questions today are going to be what are the constructs of cognitive constructivism and how do they relate to each other? So when we think about constructivism, the big idea here is learning is the process of continuous adaptation. So Piaget really looked at children and really wanted to capture the way that he thought children and babies learned about the world in a naturalistic way. So he wasn't thinking about teachers and classrooms when he thought about learning, but he was thinking about babies and toddlers exploring the world and their environment around them and how they came to understand and develop understandings about the world through this adaptation of their understandings or what he called their schemas. So learning is a process of continuous adaptation. So that's really different than a behaviorist model or the social, um, the social cognitive theory, which built upon behaviorism. So we're really looking at this from a completely new perspective here. So the key aspects, the key constructs you want to be thinking about when you hear Piaget, when you hear cognitive constructivism are continuous adaptation and the ideas of equilibrium, assimilation, accommodation, and schemes or schema. So continuous adaptation or learning. Um, it starts off with your initial understanding of the world. You're at a state of equilibrium. You feel great. You know about the world. And then you have some sort of new experience. And that experience um, might be physical or social. It's something that you experience in the world, which leads you to a state of disequilibrium. You encounter something new, and now you have to make sense of it. And um, Piaget called this state of disequilibrium the engine of development. And there's two ways that you can make sense of this new experience. You can either do assimilation or accommodation. So assimilation is incorporation into the existing schema. So you're going to take this new experience and you're going to fit it right into how you already understand the world. Um, or you're going to have an accommodation. You're going to modify your existing schema of the world. Your, your initial existing understanding of the world, you're going to modify that to make room for this new experience. And those are the mechanisms of development. And once you've done that, now you're at a new state of equilibrium, ready for a new experience. This really explains how a child would experience the world, how we are kind of we're, we're going about our day, we experience something new, we're at this equilibrium, so we either assimilate or accommodate. So let's go through an example. So this is Fifi, me Fifi. Fifi says, all animals that live in the ocean are fish, right? That's a pretty common understanding about the world, right? She's at a state of equilibrium, right? It's her initial scheme. Um, then she's told that dolphins are mammals. She hears that socially, you know, her teacher says that. One of her friends on the playground says, hey, dolphins are mammals. And she's like, so now, that's her new experience, right? Um, and now she's confused. She's in a state of disequilibrium because dolphins live in the ocean, but if dolphins are mammals, hmm, she's in a state of disequilibrium. So she has, so now she says, not all animals that live in the ocean are fish. Is that accommodation or assimilation? accommodation right because she changed her schema um, that um, about the world so understands that fish live in water and lay eggs so dolphins are not fish so she had a modified schema right does that make sense um, so that explains um, the idea of continuous adaptation this idea that you have a new experience and you go from equilibrium to disequilibrium. Um, let's look at a different example real fast here. Um, in this, another example here, I could start off um, with um, an idea, a baby might have an idea that all four-legged animals um, are dogs because I'm a toddler and I have a dog at home and he's great and I call him dog and I love dogs, right? So I go over to the neighbor's house and they have a four-legged animal. This is meow. 
wow, look at this four-legged mammal, right? This four-legged animal. Um, I'm in disequilibrium because it's a new animal I haven't seen before, right? Um, so I have two things. If I assimilate, then I say, this is new four-legged animal um, is a dog, right? Because it has four legs, it's furry, it's a dog, right? But then what if um, it meows, right? And my mom says, oh no, that's not a dog, that's a cat. So now I might have to accommodate my schema about four-legged animals, right? And I'm gonna have to say that some four-legged animals are dogs and some four-legged animals are cats, right? And then I've changed the way that I view the world. I've changed my understanding about the world, right? That there are dogs and there are cats out there, right? And as I gain experience in the world, my understanding of animals is going to become a lot deeper, right? And I'm going to have dogs and cats and rabbits and, and elephants, right? All of these things is, are going to adapt and change. And it's all through my interaction with the world, right? And um, sometimes we think that Piaget's understanding of the world and this idea of continuous adaptation only happens um, in childhood, because a lot of these examples, right, are of early childhood and, and um, examples. Um, but really, um, Piaget and others who study constructivism would say that this is a process that could happen throughout life. So think about your experiences in college, right? Hopefully, you know, you came to college with a schema about the world, about how the world works. And I hope that while you've been here at UNF, um, that you've had experiences that have changed the way that you see the world, that, you, that you've been placed at times in, in times of disequilibrium where you've had to modify your schema, you've had to change your outlook because you had these new experiences, whether it, it was a social experience and you met new people with different points of view, or it was a book that you read for a class, or it was um, a learning experience, an idea that you found out about from a lecture. Um, but that's what, that's what college should be about. That's what higher education should be about. It should also, it should be about this idea of continuous adaptation and learning as well. So I'd like you to also think about this week um, about how this idea of continuous adaptation could explain the types of learning that you've experienced in your life um, e um, through a different framework, through a different lens. Um, and please let me know if you have any questions about, constru about cognitive constructivism. Bye.